This is it. This is everything. Number one, King Peasy in the heat. And uh, today I am somewhere in China. And uh, I am sure that if I'm not mistaken, they go, they say, Niha. Niha, <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, on the show today we have uh, Whitney Matianga, aka Pretty Yonli. Uh, and uh, she's many things, so I think I will not do justice to, uh, uh, to a paragraph, a page of the titles that she goes by. So maybe if you can help us. Uh, I'm not sure if I pronounced your name correctly, so you can help our viewers and um, so that they can get to pronounce your name correctly. And also, briefly tell us uh, what is it that you are about? What are the things uh, that you do as an artist? Okay. How are you guys? My name is Brice Yonbi. I am a musician from Zimbabwe, currently based in China. I play in Bira. I teach in Bira. I'm also an actress. Uh, I've done several films and I'm a theater and stage play director. Oh, and then, wow. yeah, <laughs> and four uh, That's people. quite uh, a, 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 a heavy, heavy, heavy uh, CV right there. So um, maybe if we can start off with, where did you grow up? I grew up in Marondera. In Zimbabwe. All right. Mm. Uh, maybe if you go back to Marondi, do you remember any fond childhood memories? Uh, what I remember in Marondi is that uh, I grew up as a kid who loved music very well, so much that I could write songs for Sunday school choirs and uh, it, perform at uh, several functions, community functions, where they would want uh, some music. I just loved music uh, from a tender age. Yeah, all right. Uh, mm. So at, at, at what stage then did you decide, mm, I think I might just perform, uh, pursue this uh, performing arts thing? Okay. Growing up like any other child, I always said, I want to be a lawyer, I want to be a doctor. But uh, it was after completing my A-levels that I decided that, no, I can be other things, but uh, fondly inside, and no, I want to pursue art. I want to pursue music, acting, and everything that involves art, because that's where my talent and passion lies. So I decided that I should pursue art, even though some family members might want a doctor in a family or a lawyer, but I, I decided that I want to pursue my talent and passion because I just love art. Oh, okay. Uh, you kind of uh, yeah. took away my, my, my next question where I wanted to say we, we do not have, uh, what I would say, proper structures in school to identify and nature art which is uh, at the end of the day built a perception uh, mainly from uh, a perspective of families parents do not look at kids and think ah my child can 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 pursue art and stuff like that but you went on to to do a, a degree in performing arts how has this helped you or change your perception uh, from where you 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 growing up? How has this changed the perception of those that were looking at you growing up and saying, "I might be a lawyer, I might be performing art, but I want to be a performing artist." Oh, uh, for me, I can safely say it changed my relatives' thoughts because uh, uh, I think when we grew up, uh, art or music was viewed uh, as something. That is, uh, that does not bring some sort of income, uh, yeah. something that cannot sustain a family. So they would not support us. I remember my father telling me that his mother, my grandmother, 
vakambo raswa gitare ra hanzi nani nechi gitare changu but i don't know lezve chirombe zvisusi kuti odzidze so going up in that environment was a challenge when nobody will be supporting you but uh, for me i found it is a driving force because i wanted to show them that i cannot be a doctor i cannot be a lawyer but i can be able to live from art i can be able to take care of the family from art so i think they started to appreciate this better when i started touring across the world goes in our family i can say i was the first to to travel out of the world like out of zimbabwe going with music just by playing bira so they're saying ah you are just going to do that Uh, saying yes, but you used to say you used to be zero on the. So they started to appreciate from then, and uh, from then they've been supporting me very well. They've been there now. They understand that music is not only about zungo uh, tambo entertainment. It's an occupation to some. Yes. All right. Yeah. Um, mm. You've done so much in terms of uh, looking at the, the the platforms that you you've performed in and outside the country. Maybe if we can look at uh, Haifa, how did it come about, and uh, has the Zimbabwean community received you and accepted you that there is uh, Brit Yondi uh, who does this, starting from the platform that you had at Haifa. What had happened? What led to to you being part of uh, that festival? Okay, I performed in Haifa in 2018, 2018 edition. Uh, I performed with the Simba Arts, Simba Arts Trust. That's when I was still at school, I was still studying. So we were doing a play which combined uh, myself. Is a solo musician and some dancers from Simba Arts and another foreign uh, dancer from she was from Holland. So it was a a, a mixed act from various uh, people. So I think uh, that was the first stage that was uh, very supportive to my career. Because uh, it was a bigger stage than all the stages I had performed uh, on, uh, yeah. and people seeing people taking my art seriously while I was on stage, it was so overwhelming. And from then, it boosted my my name. And from that high uh, performance, I started getting some bookings from other uh, events out of so i can say it was a milestone for me ah, nice nice all right yes. and then uh which one is your first step which step uh, did you say okay now as a solo artist i need to get into the studio and record this track and uh what was it about because uh from looking at most of your your songs you always have a controversial, uh, you take those controversial subjects in the society where, where I think people usually complain about and keep quiet, but you decide to take that and put it in, uh, in music for us to go back and repeat and, and watch. So which one was your first uh, track and how did it come about? Okay, I can say my first track, my first first sing, single track when I I can say the first time to enter into a studio was in 2010 and I was still in high school and uh, it was recorded by Nyasha Timbe. He's now one of the finest producers in Zimbabwe. It was called Britain Large. But the funny thing about the song is that it was a hip hop song. Ah, all right. <laughs> do you yes. remember? Do you remember? Well, Maybe we can I, give us the best from from that track. Uh, uh, what is the chorus? Or the verse was like, 
Yeah, I'm kind of forgetting the, the verse because it's <laughs> I lost the, the song, but it, I, I remember I was rapping and doing the chorus at the at the same time, but the chorus was something like pretty only a lot. You know, when you are too young and you are, you are trying to hide yourself in that. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> that was so that's, like, that's the culture yeah. of people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And both. Hip hop, dance, or everything. Until in 2015, when uh, I finally discovered that I was made for Afro Jazz. Right. That's when I did my first song, yeah, which was titled. Uh, it was titled. Uh, what I don't remember. Oh, Ramba Ochinyemwerera. That was my first track that I did on a solo project. Okay, Rambo mm -hmm. uh, with this with this track. Who was your target that you wanted to do a Rambo Chinyemera and why? Rambo Chinyemera is a song of hope, which yeah. brings hope to anybody who is in a very difficult situation. Someone is almost giving up. I was just assuring them. Keep on smiling. There's light at the end of the tunnel. Yes, things may sound bad at the moment. Like even the situation we are current in, it's just a song of hope for those people who are facing some certain problems in life. Uh, all right. Yeah. In in many things that you've done, you've also. Uh, collaborated on a track. Maybe if you can tell us uh, this collaboration with uh, Steffi Wissing, uh, the German uh, violinist. Uh, what was this about? Okay, the collaboration happened in 2018, yes. We met in Norway while Esther was on tour, and she is a violinist. So we decided to fuse the sound of violin and mbira and we collaborated on my track called the teams group chema the song which she talks about uh, some problems that we may face again in life and we will be uh, crying to god please hear us because we are experiencing certain problems so the collaboration for me was so on point because we were promoting cultural diversity for the fact that she is from Germany and I am from Zimbabwe. We mixed our our flavors, African flavor and European flavor on one song. All right. Uh, how was this track uh, received? Where can people get this? And is it being played somewhere on uh, on maybe on radio stations back home or on international platforms? Yeah, the song received a, a good uh, oh, a response from radio stations, but it's on our YouTube our YouTube channel. That's at British Only Music. The song is also there. You can find it there in the it has a video with it. Oh, all mm. right, nice. And then uh, before we get into other stuff that you do, maybe if we can talk about your track about artists uh, needing money or not being paid. Maybe how did this come come about? Uh, maybe if you can tell us more about uh, this track because most of the times. Um, I've been to functions where artists maybe just get beer and yes. most of the time they seem they're okay with that. And sometimes mm. they're given t-shirts, uh, whether it's uh, some companies doing a campaign and then all they do 
just give people t-shirts while performing and artists go home and they seem like some kind of content. What has happened to, to artists to come to a point where they accept these things and also the society doesn't think to pay uh, working I was working coming back home uh, just a while ago I had my earphones I was playing music it's almost part and parcel of, of life you know sometimes even if you're sitting down as a family uh, you're on YouTube you're on music channels or you're watching something you know but it's something that people seem to have not given much value. So maybe if we can answer that, and then we we'll get into the inspiration behind the song. Okay. okay. On the song, same without money, or Mbiri Sinamari, as people are not calling it <laughs> these days. Uh, I was advocating for my fellow artists and I wasn't uh, mentioning musicians only but I think everybody in the aspect of the interacting uh, anything that involves us producers yeah. and everybody if you notice that many people are so famous that if you ask them you can say but you know, yeah. are not everywhere. You read about them in papers. So, you know, why are you paying it? You can't even afford or pay your own bills. So, we notice that it's because, yes, our music is playing out there. But on the ground, Kairos is killing us. We are not benefiting uh even during performances uh, we are gaining getting meager salaries we can't afford to feed our family like uh, what you were saying at the end of the day we have some families to take care of at the end of the day we have some music to record we need to pay for some art covers for recording so how do we earn, how do we manage to produce more stuff when we are not getting something back? So I was just advocating and saying, no, fame without money is nothing because it doesn't help. It is in the kuna britu, kuna chi, but nasu katundona nuku katundu dola and jina dola nchorukuti in this It's very, it's a very sad situation, particularly in our industry and so i was just uh, appealing to the community like, so that we can find goody in our entertainment industry how best can we support our artists if it's by buying their music let's buy music let's not promote uh, pirates because at the end of the day we want to feed our families all right yeah. Uh, how was this check received? Do you think there is change of attitude towards uh, towards artists? Did this check have an impact? I know uh, it had a huge following on Facebook. Mm -hmm. So has this translated to something that you can say, people seem to have accepted that, okay, artists have value. We need to to kind of respect and appreciate what they do. Yeah, I can say to some extent it helped because uh, people started realizing the, uh, I can say, the challenges that we go through as musicians. Because many people will be thinking that we just do this maybe for funny, we are just uh, doing it as a hobby. But through the song, they began to understand that we, we also need money when we are working because some of us that's our work <laughs> that's yeah. our office when i'm on stage i'm in my office <laughs> so yes. at the end of the day i'm expecting something so i think yeah people are but that's bad <laughs> uh, all right <laughs> yeah. uh, let's talk about china what, what's happening in china you 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 how do you find yourself 
in China? What's, what is it that you're doing in China at the moment uh, before we talk about uh, your fashion and uh, the, the organization that you, you do? Okay. In China, I'm a performing artist at Ling Ling International Circus. I play in Lira, I sing, I do theatrical stage plays and stuff. I just perform. I'm a performer. Oh, all right. How has been the reception? And uh, is there an inquiry on, uh, because most of the times we, we are forced to, to, to raise this bubble flag. So, uh, uh, how how has has this been received? Are, are people curious about finding out more about Zimbabwe and how is this working for you? What is the interaction or the feedback that you get from people that you perform uh, in front of? I can say I'm very impressed that the overwhelming response that I've been getting this site. The I've noticed that. They appreciate and love our African music because it's unique. It's something uh, that carries a unique flavor, especially when you're fusing with Mbira drums. It's something she's not Jerika to the international community. So they would want to know more and dig deep about uh, our music and our culture. So I can probably say. I'm <laughs> representing Zimbabwe in a special way because I'm marketing our culture out here through ah. music. Ah, nice, nice. Uh, hope we can maybe watch some of the shows sometime if if it's possible. Um, not sure about the laws in China in this live podcast. I haven't seen much happening from China. So, so if it's possible, please. Uh, involve us so we can see you on stage. Okay. Yeah. Now uh, let's come to I'll music for girls. In... Yeah, sorry, sorry, I didn't get that. The last part. I will post some of the shows on my Facebook page. Ah, nice, nice, right. Yeah. Now let's come to music for girls and women. That is the organization that you founded. Why the discrimination? Why why not music for everyone? We also want to do music. So why was this specific? Uh, why, why was this gender uh, specific? Okay, uh, this was from a personal experience. Growing up as a girl child, uh, loving music so much, yeah. I could not record or I could not get the spotlight that I wanted just because the industry was male dominated and uh, it just broke my heart saying okay why is it that only men are getting like uh, uh, more recognition than us ladies why are we marginalized so I, it was just troubling me as I grew until I then thought of uh, opening a platform for ladies, for women, women in art, so that we can showcase our talents without any competition from our fellow counterparts. I really respect women, I, I respect men. Yes, they are my brothers in the industry, but I also want to open a platform for my fellow ladies because in most events, even if you see the posters, uh, festival posters, you see that the biggest number is the male number. So what about us? What about us as women? We need also to be recognized. So Mufogo was uh, my brainchild. I, after experiencing some marginalization, yes. Okay. So this organization, does it only does it focus on uh, girls and women in Zimbabwe or this organization is something that is international. Uh, how are you doing this? Because uh, uh, what you're saying also I think plays out on an uh, international scale where women are usually the headlining acts, are usually the ones who, who are the owners of the show. Everyone else is supporting. You know. So uh, how is your organization? What's the focus of your organization? 
Oh, Mfogo is a global event, so it will be hosted in Zimbabwe mm -hmm. annually. And the first edition will be in this this coming December, on the 22nd of December, at DMV in Chitungweza. That's where we are hosting our first edition of the festival. Ah, okay, nice. Uh, so since it's for women, are we invited? as men <laughs> yes you you can come as audience <laughs> you are most invited <laughs> you everybody is invited it's a family event yeah all right so but, so are there any uh international acts that will be part of this uh first edition uh so far we it's uh, we don't have an international act, but hopefully next year. This year is only for some girls. Uh, uh, nice. Mm. And then uh, you you also have you are a fashion designer also. Uh, you have your 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 label there, but you only wear. And uh, how did this come about? You you play mbira, you play this instrument, you do theater, you dance, you sing, and then uh, let me do uh, come up with some fashion items. How did this clothing line come about, and how far has it gone? Okay, the clothing line was inspired by uh, my friends. They're the ones who came to me and said, ah, you, your brand is growing, but we want to support wherever we go. We want people to see that we are your supporters, we are your fans. Do you have something for us? Then I sit down and thought, what can I give to them? Then I thought uh, branding T-shirts and caps, uh, woodies and clothes will be perfect. For my fans, I do. I did this with my fans in mind. Ah, nice. Yeah, to show them that I appreciate them for being my supporters. Ah, okay, nice. Has this brand though uh, grown beyond being uh, something for your fans? Have other people find found it attractive? Like in China, probably maybe a Chinese person who sees the T-shirt and or the hoodie and and loves what because we also dress like from from africa we dress things that we don't know what they mean so but yeah. you find it nice you know and then it's later on in life that oh that's louis vuitton it's the name of a person or something like that otherwise gucci what is gucci we don't know you know later in life that oh we're dressing this this is what it means or it's the name of someone so has people there accepted or appreciated uh in the fashion level. Yes, people have appreciated the level. And now I, I did it for the fans, but now I've noticed that everybody is now <laughs> loving the, the brand. It's going beyond uh, my expectations because at first, in English, and what are but now I'm orders from all over the world. They are saying, no, we need this, we need that. So the brand is now growing and I have started taking it uh, more seriously. Well, all right, nice. You you also uh, uh, actually, uh, I should have uh, probably mentioned this before. You're also an ambassador for, for La Monkey. Uh, which is a, a collection a, a of um, clothing line from the United States. How did this come about? Are you still working with Lamonki? Uh, what's the relationship now? Yes, I, I'm still a brand ambassador for Lamonki. Lamonki actually is uh, mainly the founder is from Botswana, but the brand is now based in USA. Uh, yeah. Yes, I became their ambassador in 2018 while I was in Norway on my European tour. They have been following me and they approached me and said, ah, we love your profile and your brand and uh, how, uh, why don't we make you our brand ambassador? 
and uh, I accepted that because it was a huge honor for me to be noticed uh, beyond Zimbabwe by yes. some certain organizations or some certain companies. So it was a huge privilege for me. And I'm still uh, the brand ambassador for Lamonke Collection. Ah, all right, nice. Yeah, in, uh, in, in closing, maybe if you can tell us what you're working on and what we can uh, look forward to besides the, the festival that's coming up uh, in December. Okay, I'm working on a 16 track album that is 16, 16 track. All right, yeah. yeah yes, uh, I'm a generous artist. I want to give to my fans, so I'm giving them a 16 track album next year, I think uh, around December in 2021. Yeah. Uh -huh. And uh, a few singles along the way, <laughs> they are coming. Well, what's the inspiration? What, what can you look forward uh, to in this album? Do you have a theme that you're pursuing in the album or you're just having different aspects that you will address in the album? Oh, uh, it's a, I can say it's a mixed feeling album because you are going to expect uh, various uh, like genres in one album. So, the need for, for adventure, I'm exploring, I'm exploring in the art forest, <laughs> so I'm just bringing in everything that I found necessary. In now, like, can now, can you do that? I don't hear the main thing, but... Okay. Yeah, are there any features that you can expect? Yes, I am going to feature local and regional or international artists in the album. Ah, okay, so I suppose you don't want to tell us the names, but that's fine. I know, I'm not <laughs> 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 uh, don't do that to us. Uh, all right. Uh, has has COVID affected uh, anything uh, in in your in your performances? Because most places are closed. Art places mainly in Europe and in Africa they are closed. They they are not functioning. If they are functioning, they're functioning at a minimum with limited numbers. Uh, what's happening in China? Yes, COVID affected my career in a number of ways because this album was supposed to, to be done this year, to be released this year, and I had to postpone it to next year. Mm -hmm. Then uh, there is um, uh, some tours that we, I had some tours lined up in August in Scotland and in Sweden, but due to COVID, we cancelled them. So it affected my music a lot, a lot. All right. But how is the situation there? How is, how is it, uh, are things back to normal in China? Yes, in China, things are now back to normal. And there's just my prayer that uh, it will turn out good to the whole world. Yeah, all right. I think I think China should just tell us the the remedy. Well, what is it that they did right? Because I think uh, most governments, uh, the way they are going about this thing, I think it's it's just not looks like they need a solution. It, it only worsens things, especially in the countries where there's democracy and rights. They, they there's too much freedom. Uh, for people to do whatever, and in the process, it's not helping the situation. So maybe they should just say China run the world for for four months and. and we'll <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, yeah. thank you so much. Okay. Thank you so much for your time, uh, uh, It was a pleasure having you. Thank you for having me. It was a pleasure.
as well. It was a pleasure being here on Ear Grounds Radio. Thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, my name is King Boaz, uh, New Voices Amplify. That was pretty only. She's many things, and I hope that you can follow her page and uh, search for her on YouTube and find out what she does. And uh, she has a unique sound. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure if her sound is something that I can say uh, she sounds like this other artist. So she is an artist that is worth your attention. So you, you can go out there and check out her music. Uh, this is King Boas, Ear Crown. I'm out. <laughs>